Hi there, I'm Jim. Do you like smashing things into a pulp and collecting shiny things? Well then this Hammer of the Ancients build may just be for you. It's a basic catch all hoe to build for Season 3 of Diablo 4, and it gets the job done in every situation. So let's get to the build. So let's start with the skill tree. We're going to grab Lunging Strike, and then Enhanced Lunging Strike. We're going to grab 5 in Hammer of the Ancients, of course. And we're going to go for Furious Hammer of the Ancients. Then we're going to come down here to our defensive skills. 3 in Imposing Presence, and 3 in Martial Vigor. Then also Rallying Cry, and into Tactical Rallying Cry. We're also going to pick up Outburst, and Tough as Nails, 1 point each. 1 in Challenging Shout, and the Enhanced Challenging Shout. Then we move down to our brawling skills here. We're going to take one in Warcry and Enhanced Warcry. We're also going to pick up three in Booming Voice, three in Aggressive Resistance, and three in Prolific Fury. So, so far it's pretty standard for Hammer of the Ancients. Now in Weapon Mastery, we're going to take three in Pit Fighter, one in Thick Skin, two in Defensive Stance, and 3 in Counter Offensive. Then we're going to move down to our Ultimate Skills, and we're going to grab 3 in the Wallop Passive, 3 in Brute Force, 3 in Tempered Fury, 3 in Invigorating Fury, and then we're going to take Wrath of the Berserker and all its nodes. And lastly, our key passive is of course going to be Unbridled Rage. So that's pretty much it for the skill tree, very standard. Although you can alter it based on what you're doing. So if you need more move speed, of course, for running away from Lilith, you could just take points out of defensive stance and put it into swiftness. And if you do want to take charge to utilize that build, you would take out Wrath of the Berserker or Challenging Shout, depending on how tanky you are. And you would put those points into charge with power charge. So that pretty much wraps up the skills, let's move on to the Paragon board. And if you want to look at the build at your own pace, the build planner will be in the description below. So, for the starting board, we're going to put in Territorial, for damage to close enemies, and 10% damage reduction against close enemies. Then we come up here to our second board, which is the Bonebreaker board. We're going to put in the Martial Glyph. So after casting a shout skill, the active cooldown of every other non-shout skill is reduced by 4 seconds. And it also gives us a nice bonus to all magic nodes within range. So in this case, it's giving us a nice boost to overpower. As well as a nice boost to damage reduction when healthy. For our third board, we're going to be taking the Warbringer board, making sure we get the legendary node. So for every 75 fury we spend, Gain 15% of our max life as Fortify, so that pretty much keeps Fortify on all the time. And we're going to put in the Exploit Glyph, so a lot of vulnerable damage here, and when an enemy is damaged by us, they become vulnerable for 3 seconds. Pretty standard there. For our fourth board, we're going to be taking the Carnage board here. And for the Glyph, we're going to be using Aya, so that basically gives us a whole bunch of damage while berserking, and while berserking, we take 10% reduced damage from elites. For our fifth board, we're going to be taking the Blood Rage board, so killing a bleeding enemy has a 10% chance to grant berserking for 5 seconds, and our damage is increased by 25% of damage while berserking bonus, so 75% is our current bonus. For the Glyph, we're going to be putting in Crusher, so that's just bonus damage with maces, and whilst wielding a mace, we deal 30% increased overpower damage. Very, very handy there. And from there we come down and make sure we pick up the legendary node for our second board, Bonebreaker. So every 12 seconds, our next skill is guaranteed to overpower. Then we come over here to the left of our fourth board. For our final board, the sixth board, which is Decimator making sure we take the legendary node. So each time we make an enemy vulnerable, damage is increased by 10% multiplicative for 5 seconds, 
and overpowering a vulnerable enemy grants an additional 10% bonus for 5 seconds. As for the glyph, we're going to use the dominate glyph. So that gives us a whole load of overpower damage, as you can see, almost 400%. And after not overpowering for 30 seconds, next attack will overpower. So that is it for the Paragon board. It's fairly straightforward board, works really well in all situations. Nightmare Dungeons, Dereal Rotations, Malphus, Loom, Bosses, whatever. So next up we have the Expertise. Pretty straightforward, I'm just using the two-handed axe expertise for the increased damage to vulnerable and increased critical strike chance against vulnerable. So next up we have the Season 3 gimmick, which is the Seneschal Construct. And we're basically going to give it two governing stones, which will do some kind of ability. And each governing stone will get three support stones, which are called tuning stones. So for our first governing stone, I'm using Flash of Adrenaline. So that gives us a quick flash into the player, increasing damage dealt by 20% for 12 seconds. So that's really handy. And for the tuning stones there, we're going to be using the initiative support, which will teleport the construct to us if it gets out of range. And we're going to be using duration support. So the supported duration skills have their durations increased by 4 seconds. And this counts as a duration skill. So then we're also going to be using the tactical support which is going to decrease the cooldown of supported skill by 40%. So cooldown is 12 seconds and it lasts for 12 seconds. So it's pretty much a 20% damage bonus at almost all times. So for our second governing stone we're using Tempest. So this will electrically charge an enemy, causing it to deal damage to itself and one additional enemy each second over 5 seconds. So and if that enemy is killed, the Tempest spreads to another enemy, gaining 2 additional seconds and bonus damage. And if they're reapplied to the same enemy, these bonuses also count. So for this Governing Stone, the Chewing Stones will be using our Safeguard. So when the supported skill is used, it grants us 10.5% damage reduction in my case. And then we go on to our second tuning stone, Efficiency Support. So when the supporting skill deals damage, we gain 13% critical strike chance, the same targets hit for 3 seconds. And for our last tuning stone here, we're going to be taking Resource Support. So we gain 12 primary resource in my case, when the supporting skill first deals damage. So this skill is giving us basically a bunch of critical strike chance, bunch of damage reduction, and a bunch of primary resource generation. Pretty handy little construct here, not much else to say about it. Let's move on to the gear. And on the left I'll list the affixes I think you should get from best to worst. So, for the helm, you're going to be using Tusk Helm of Jorath's the Mighty. Of course if you can get a Shako, then you would use that. And if you can't get the Tusk Helm just yet, you would look for a helmet with total armor percent, cooldown reduction, max fury, and max life. If you can't get that, then you would look for any of the resistances that you need to shore up your resistances. And as for the aspect, you would put on disobedience if you are using a normal legendary helm. And when you're fighting bosses, you would want to be using a Godslayer crown, so for Duriel or Lilith, because that gives you the massive unique damage bonus. You deal 30 to 60% increased damage to bosses for 3 seconds. So next up you have the chest piece. And you're going to want to be looking for something with total armor percent, damage reduction when fortified, flat damage reduction, and damage reduction against bleeding enemies. If you can't get that, then look for damage reduction against close, against distant, or max life, or all stats. And as for the aspect, you're going to be putting Juggernauts on here, so we're just going to gain a huge flat amount of armor, but our Evade has a 100% increased cooldown. Next up we have the Gloves. So for the Gloves, we're going to be looking for Crit Chance, Ranks into Hammer of the Ancients, Attack Speed, and Strength. If you can't get that, then look for All Stats and Overpower. And as for the aspect, I've got Elements in here at the moment. But you could swap that out for Relentless Berserker. I'll talk more about that in a bit. 
So Elements gets 30% increased damage to a set of damage type for 7 seconds, alternating between Fire, Lightning, Physical, and Cold, Poison, Shadow. For the Pants, we're going to be using Tybalt's Will, which is pretty much mandatory. Gives us a huge amount of damage, flat. Gives us some extra maximum resource, damage reduction from close, and of course we deal 20-40% to 40 increased damage while unstoppable, and for 4 seconds after. And when we become unstoppable, we gain 50 of our primary resource. So if you don't have Tybalt's Will, you would want to get something with Total Armor, Damage Reduction, Damage Reduction when Fortified, and Damage Reduction against Bleeding Enemies. If you can't get those, then look for Damage Reduction when Injured or Resistances. And next up, we have the Boots. So we're going to be looking for Movement Speed and 3 Resistances. If you can't get the 3 res, then you would look for Fury Cost Reduction and Berserking Duration. So I have Relentless Berserker as the aspect here, so damaging an enemy with a core skill has up to a 36% chance in my case to extend duration of Berserking for 2 seconds. But you could use Ghost Walkers here if you wanted, and put the Relentless Berserkers on the gloves. I just prefer having the damage and the extra berserking time, so that's why I use Elements and Berserkers. Relentless Berserkers. So next up we have the weapons, and we're going to be looking for these same stats across all four weapons here, so we're going to be looking for Strength, All Stats, Overpower Damage, and Damage While Berserking. So if you can't get those, then you would look for Damage to Close Percent, Core Damage Percent, and then after that, if you really can't get those, go for Vulnerable or Crit Damage Percent. You also want to make sure that you are looking for a two-handed sword for the two-handed slashing weapon for the innate critical strike damage. And for the dual wielding weapons, you want to be looking for maces for the extra overpower damage. As for the aspects, on the two-handers, we're going to be putting the aspect of Limitless Rage on. So each point of fury we generate while at max fury grants our next core skill within 5 seconds. 4% increased damage up to 60%, so that's a huge amount of damage increase there. For our other two-hander, we're going to be using Edge Masters, so skills deal up to 20-40% to increased damage based on available resource when cast. Of course, for the two-handed sword, you're going to be using the Grandfather Sword if you can get that. And then you would transfer Edge Masters somewhere else, probably the gloves. So for the one-handers, we're going to be using the aspect of Ancestral Force, so Hammer of the Ancients quakes outward, and its damage is increased by 5-15%. to And the second one-hander, we're going to be using the Earth Strikers aspect. So after swapping weapons 8 times, our next non-basic skill will overpower and deal 50%, in my case, increased overpower damage. Now let's move on to the amulet here. We're going to be using the Banish Lord's Talisman, so, basically another drop from Duriel. And that's going to give us the unique passive after spending 300 primary resource. Our next core skill is guaranteed to overpower. And our crits that overpower deal 80 to 120% increased damage. It also gives us a bunch of critical strike chance, which is really nice for an amulet. Overpower damage, good resource generation, and 2 to core skills, which is really nice as well. So if you don't have access to this, you would use an amulet with total armor, damage reduction, cooldown reduction, and fury cost reduction. If you can't get that, then go for damage reduction when fortified, strike percent, and movement speed percent. So next up we have the rings, and we're going to be using our ring of the red fury here. So that gives us strength, attack speed, maximum fury, and a really really good amount of resource generation, as well as the unique passive after spending 100 fury within 3 seconds, and next cast of Hammer of the Ancients within 5 seconds is guaranteed to crit, and deal bonus critical strike damage. And for our other ring, we're going to be looking for something with critical strike chance, resource generation, berserking damage, and max fury. And if you can't get those, look for close damage percent and overpower damage percent. So I'm going to be using the Bold Chieftain's aspect here, so whenever we cast a Shout, its cooldown is reduced by 1.9 seconds per nearby enemy, up to a maximum of 6 seconds. So basically, 
when there's three enemies with this ring, it takes six seconds off of each shout when we use it. So really helpful there for the uptime. Now, if you don't have access to Ring of the Red Fury yet, you would just use another ring, which would have the same stats as this ring. So again, critical strike chance, damage while berserking, maximum fury and resource generation. And you would use the aspect of Echoing Fury to generate nine fury per second in my case while any shout skill is active, or you would use Unrelenting Fury, so killing an enemy or hitting a boss with a core skill refunds 20-30% to 30 of its base fury cost. So as for the gems here, basically we're going to want red gems in the armor. You could use blue gems if you wanted for the damage reduction when fortified, but I'm going with the red gems. For the weapons, definitely going for the red gems for the overpower damage here. And for the rings, you're basically going to be wanting to get the gems to shore up any problems you have with your resistances. So in my case, I've got two green gems and one blue gem. If your resistances are more balanced, of course, you would be using the, the white gems. So that pretty much wraps up the build. I hope this video helped you guys out and that you learned something from it. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe as it helps out the channel a lot. And I will hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.